It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget that the simple act of successfully switching on the electric power requires a power station somewhere. 90% of Australia's electric power comes from coal-fired power stations like this one. Energy is a fundamental factor in production, and coal around the world has been a major energy source for hundreds of years. Coal is also a fundamental component for the manufacture of iron and steel. Coke, made from coal in plants like this, limestone and iron ore are the major components of the mix for blast furnaces. In a consumer society, with all its sophisticated manufactured components, it's easy to forget the importance of coal. Australian coal deposits are regarded as amongst the world's finest for size and quality. Shortly after the first European landing here at Circular Quay in 1788, coal was discovered at Newcastle by William Bryant, an escaped convict. The year was 1791 and he burnt some of his discovery in a fire. Matthew Flinders recorded the second discovery at Balambi on the Illawarra coast in March 1796. The third discovery was made by William Clark and two others in June 1797. This discovery was a major seam, outcropping just above sea level in a cliff. George Bass chronicled this same discovery a few weeks later. The discovery was to be known as Coal Cliff. Other discoveries, Lithgow, Katoomba and even Balmain, showed the enormity of the deposits in and around the Greater Sydney region. It's easy to forget that much of Australia's wealth still comes from the export of coal. Today, trains continually take coal to the export loading facilities at various points around the Commonwealth. We will concentrate our attention onto the areas where coal was first discovered, and in particular at that cliff of coal discovered by Clark and recorded by Bass. Mining commenced at Coal Cliff in 1861. The conditions of work underground and the coal seam were recorded as being very good. January 1878 saw the mine and a jetty ready for the first shipment in a steam collier called the Eagle. Entrance to the seam was a mere 40 feet above sea level. The jetty was soon washed away and was replaced a year later, this time four foot higher. This jetty was washed away two years later in 1881 and a replacement was built six foot higher. The mine proved difficult with surface landslips, faults underground, and water was prevalent in the mine. Still the seam continued to be work, but from new shafts, moved further inland. A coke manufacturing plant was built at Coalcliffe and still operates, producing fine quality coke for foundry and blast furnace use. Some of its output is exported, adding to the nation's wealth. It's easy to forget that the skill of a manager in places such as mine sites, is crucial in building a community. 1956 saw Marjorie and Noel Leader move to Coalcliffe. Noel had been appointed manager, a significant step in any young couple's career, and Noel and Marjorie had a young daughter and son. It's amazing that three and a half decades after the departure of Noel and Marjorie from Coalcliffe, that the legacy of their commitment to their community is remembered and remains part of the village. Workplace relations were extremely difficult at this time, with confrontations being the norm. Noel may have been happy to play this game by the standing rules, but had a greater vision for Coalcliffe and its workers in their clifftop cottages. Noel sought cooperation and greater productivity from his staff and in return gave cooperation and support for community projects. This community hall is one such outcome. Noel also documented in film much of the area's development with some documentary productions now in the National Archive. 
Perhaps the greatest achievement in the leader's time at Colcliffe was the identification and addressing of a problem with regard to access to the beach and pool by children. Children using the resources of the beach were required to clamber over rocks and the area was generally unstable. Noel soon saw a solution to the problem and bringing all the resources of the community together with a certain amount of heavy machinery from his employer, the solution was soon in place. The solution was to backfill at least two building blocks of land fronting the ocean with, you guessed it, material from the mine. A reasonably complex drainage system was incorporated into the earthworks to ensure ongoing stability. A park was thus established and Noel was recognised for his key role by the Wollongong Council, naming the park Leader Park. As you can see, opening day was a great occasion, with all the community leaders present, including a young Rex Jackson, the local member. Today the park still performs the role Noel had envisaged. The community of Colcliffe, like all communities, remembers and appreciates those people with vision like Noel, who can see past their own direct wants and needs and get things done. Of course, it's easy to forget that behind people like Noel, there is always their number one supporter, in this case, Marjorie. Whilst it's easy to forget, Noel and Marjorie were key people in the Coalcliffe community and are remembered there today.